everyone, welcome back to my channel and to today's video. I hope you're all doing well. So in today's video, I'm going to be sharing with you five of my favourite ever pattern hacks. Pattern hacking is something that I really love to do. This video is actually inspired by a challenge that I have running over on Instagram in collaboration with Kath from Made by Kath Craft. We're running a challenge over on Instagram called So Mash Up. Um, and the idea of that challenge is that you have a go at making up a new garment by combining two patterns that you can mash together to make a completely new garment. So that challenge is running over on Instagram during the month of July 2022, just in case you're not watching this in real time. <laughs> um, so it will end on the 31st of July. But we thought it would be a lot of fun to run that challenge. We both love hacking patterns and trying to make new garments based on patterns we've already got. Um, so yeah, it's just a bit of fun really. But it did make me think about previous hacks that I've made and previous pattern mashups and things like that. So I thought I'd go back through my makes and just pick out a few of my favourite pattern hacks and share them with you today. So one of the pattern hacks that I'm going to be sharing with you is actually what I'm wearing, but I'm not going to start with that one today. I'm actually going to start with two pattern hacks that I made using the same pattern, and that is the Ogden Cami by True Bias. So I'm sure you will have heard of this pattern, but I'll pop in an image here because I have the PDF version, I don't have the proper pattern. Um, so the Ogden Cami is a super popular pattern. So many people have made it and hacked it um, around in the sewing community. And there are so many sort of inspirational hacks and inspirational pictures and things on Instagram. And I'm sure you will have seen a few here on YouTube as well. But I've made two hacks um, using this pattern. I think I've only made two so far. Um, but it is a really lovely sort of basic pattern. It's great for beginners. It's super simple. There are only a couple of pattern pieces and then your cami straps to put together. So it's a really good one to try and make as it is at the beginning of your sewing journey. But as you become a bit more adventurous, um, it's a really good one to hack around and use parts of it to make up new garments. So I'll show you my two hacks now. So the first hack I made using the Ogden Cami pattern was actually this midi dress. This is a really slippy fabric, so it's gonna be slipping around all over my lap. <laughs> um, this was one of my Minerva brand ambassador posts, and it's from a really lovely, super silky, drapey fabric. Um, so I made this using the Ogden Cami pattern, and what I've done is just used the, um, the lining pieces of the Ogden Cami. I believe, if I remember correctly. Um, and I've made the front and back of the lining pieces up as they are, and just as the pattern tells you to put them together. And then I've just added two gathered rectangles to the bottom of that super short bodice to make a very long um, midi dress. And it's all gathered in just under your um, bust line here. So it's kind of empire line, I think it's called, where it's just falling under your bust. Um, so yeah, that was a really lovely, super easy hack to try. Um, and what I did as well, because I'm not always keen on things being massively oversized, I actually made a really, um, really, really long, super skinny belt tie <laughs> that I can actually use to tie around um, where the waistline meets the skirt, um, just for when I want the dress to be pulled in and look that bit more fitted. So I'll put a couple of images in of the dress here so that you can see what it looks like on. And I do have a very old sew along video of me making this dress as well. So if you're interested to see me making this dress and how I did it and everything, then I'll link that down below. But that is a super quick and easy hack to make with the Ogden Cami. There are loads of ways that you can hack the Ogden Cami into a dress. Obviously, it's a really nice slip style top so you can actually sort of lengthen it down and make a slip dress with it you could also make a really long tiered maxi skirt with it which i know kath has done from um, made by kath craft again and hers looks really lovely you could also make it um, as a short baby doll style dress as well so loads of different ways to hack that pattern um, but this is my way and i'm really really pleased with it i love the length of it as well it just feels like it could be dressed up or dressed down really you could wear it with a t-shirt under it or whatever as well if you didn't want to be too exposed. 
So that's that one. The next hack I made using the Ogden Cami pattern was actually this one. So this is a really pretty one and it's been hacked into a peplum style top with a little skirt on the bottom. And I've also added a button band down the middle of the top as well. So I can't take credit at all for this hack. I actually used a blog post over on the True Buyers website, um, which the designer had written and I followed that to make this top and it's a really, really lovely hack. I really enjoyed making this. So all the instructions are there on the True Bias website. So I'll link that blog post down below. So if you do want to pop over and try this hack for yourself, then all the instructions will be there. But funnily enough, I do actually have a sew along video of me making this one as well. So I'll link that one down below. And this is made from a beautiful art gallery rayon fabric. So it's really nice and drapey as well. It looks super short when I'm holding it like this, but it does actually come to sort of hip length on me. So it's really nice to wear with high-waisted things. And it just has the sort of um, little V-neck dip at the back there. I quite like wearing this with cardigans and things over it. I'm not always that keen on being as exposed as the Ogden cami makes you around your shoulders and sort of bust and back area. But I do think this looks really pretty underneath a sort of a lightweight cardigan or a shirt or something like that. So that's a really nice hack to try. I love this um, button placket here. I'll just undo the button so that you can see inside. So on the um, blog post, it gives you all of the instructions on how to make a separate little button placket, which you sew into um, part of your front bodice piece. And the inside and outside of the back and front bodice is all nicely lined. Hopefully you can see that inside, um, where it's all nicely lined there. And then the peplum part of the top isn't lined. I think it's quite nice sometimes if you're using quite a sheer fabric if you leave part of the top unlined because then you kind of get a, a flash of whatever you're wearing underneath like jeans or something through the fabric and that looks quite nice sometimes as well um i really like how these are finished as well so you actually make some little sort of rouleau loops to make for your button loops and yeah it's just so pretty and so delicate and i really really enjoyed making that and I'd really like to make up a plain version of this actually and I do have some Atelier Roulette pale pink viscose that I could use to make another one of these actually. It's on my ever growing list of sewing things. Sometimes I make a hack and I think oh, I would really like to try that again but then other things just come in the way and I never get it done. But this is another hack that I would really like to try again. Just to mention actually that I always shorten my straps on the Ogden Cami slightly so that it pulls up a little bit because the Ogden Cami can be quite low cut and it's a bit low cut for me as it is. So just by shortening your um, cami straps, it just brings it up slightly so that your V-neck isn't quite so low down on you. And that's just a super quick and easy um, little change to make just to make it a little bit more wearable. So yeah, I really love that hack. So I thought I would include that one in the video today. Next hack I wanted to share is this very pink dress. <laughs> So I don't know if you remember this one, I made this quite a while ago um, and it was inspired by a really beautiful dress that I'd seen on the Suzanne website. I love Suzanne clothes. This make was actually inspired by that dress. So if you can see from this image here, it's quite a busy one and you can't really see the lines of the dress, but the dress um, has an open bodice which ties up at the top and then a floaty sort of mini style tiered gathered skirt. So I decided I wanted to make my own version of that dress and I used this lovely pink viscose fabric from Sew Me Sunshine. I hope this doesn't look too creased on the camera actually, it's actually quite creased and in need of an iron. Um, so I hope it doesn't look too bad. So I used this um, lovely pink viscose from Sew Me Sunshine which is a good couple of years old now so I very much doubt they'll have any in stock. Um, but I thought about the patterns that I had already and knew that I had a couple of patterns that I thought would work really nicely to make a dress inspired by the Suzanne one. So to make the bodice of this dress, I used the Megan Nielsen Sudley dress pattern. So the Sudley dress pattern is a really nice baby doll style, simple gathered dress, but there are loads of parts to this dress that you can swap around. So you can actually make it as a top, um, with a tie at the front there and a little sort of keyhole opening. You can add a Peter Pan collar to it if you want to, or you can make it um, with like a short empire line, again, bodice, and then a nice gathered skirt, which the model here is wearing is quite a mini dress. 
Um, so yeah, it's a really good pattern, again, to just swap around and hack about. I've made a couple of top versions of this, and I do have another hack that I made that I'm going to be sharing with you in a minute using this pattern. Um, so yeah, that's what I use for the top version of my dress. So to make the keyhole opening and the tie, I use the dress bodice here. So you can see that it has the keyhole opening and it has the sort of little neck ties. And I shortened the sleeves slightly just to make them a little bit shorter than they are on the pattern. So that's what I use to make the bodice. And you can see hopefully that it is quite similar to the one in the Suzanne image, that sort of keyhole tie style, which you can wear open or tied up at the neck if you prefer. And then to make the mini tiered style skirt, I used another pattern that I already had in my stash and that was the Fibre Mood mirror dress skirt. <laughs> so I've made one version of the mirror dress long ago in my sewing journey, um, but something that I didn't realise I had to take into consideration when I made that dress was that with Fibre Mood patterns you print them out as PDF and then you need to add seam allowance. So luckily my first mirror dress did actually fit me okay but when i came to make this dress i had to remember to add seam allowances not that it would matter too much when you're making a skirt like this because you just lose a bit of the fullness of the gather if you didn't add your seam allowance which would be hardly anything really in a skirt this size um but yeah when it came to the bodice I didn't have my seam allowances so I was very lucky there that it still fit me okay. I could have done with a bit of extra room but it was wearable. So always take note of that if you are ever to make a fibre mood pattern that some of them do need seam allowances adding. So that was the skirt that I needed to use to uh, make my Suzanne inspired dress and I really like how it turned out. So it is quite an oversized dress um, because the Sudley dress bodice is oversized anyway it's that sort of you know oversized uh baby doll style dress that's everywhere <laughs> still um and the mirror dress skirt is very oversized as well so this one is perfect for really hot days i'll pop in an image of me wearing it here this was a couple of years ago but i wore this when we went out on a day here in england when it was about 35 degrees which is really hot for us um, and it was just perfect really. It's so nice and floaty and it really does keep you cool. So yeah, a really good one for hot holidays and hot weather when we ever get any here in England. So that's that one. So next I'll just talk about the dress that I'm wearing. So this is a real oldie, <laughs> um, but it's one that I'm really proud of. It's probably one of the first hacks that I ever tried, which is inspired by something that I saw on the high street. So I found online a really lovely dress from New Look, which I'll pop in here so that you can see what my inspiration was. Um, I really love the look of this dress. I love the sort of crossover neckline and I love the midi length of it and I really love the colour of it as well. So I decided to have a go at making my own version of that dress, which was one of those sewing dilemmas because the dress itself wasn't very expensive at all. I think it was something like $16.99 and it definitely would have cost me more to buy the fabric and make this dress myself. But um, in my attempt to not be swayed by high street fast fashion, I decided to give it a go and make my own version of this dress. So again, I do have a sew along making this dress. Um, it's very old and probably a bit cringy. <laughs> um, it's funny watching my older videos back now, how cringy you feel they are. I'm sure I look back on these videos I'm doing now and feel the same. Um, but yeah, the older ones do make me cringe a little bit. But I'll pop it in anyway, so that if you want to see more of this sewing process of me making this dress, you can find out more about that. Um, but I decided to have a go at making this dress using two patterns that I already have and they're both from the Tilly and the Buttons Make It Simple book. So here's the Make It Simple book by Tilly and the Buttons. This is such a great book and I feel like all the patterns that are in here are really hackable and it's a great one to buy just if you want sort of, um, yeah, bits of bits and pieces of garments really that you can hack and use in different makes. So I knew that I had two patterns in this book that I could use to have a go at making this dress. So to make the bodice of this dress, I'm wearing it here and I do have it pinned here because I had a little press stud here which has fallen off and I didn't realise until I came to put the dress on. So I do have it sort of pinned with a safety pin here at the moment, ready to be fixed after this video. Um, but yes, I knew that I could make, to make the sort of wrap over bodice, I knew that I had this pattern which is the Sophia play suit pattern from the Make It Simple book. And you can see here that it has a lovely 
crossover style bodice to it. So I decided to use that as the basis for the bodice of my dress and I added a flounce here around the top. So basically I just sewed a flounce to the um, crossover parts of the bodice and I've used a facing just to finish it off nicely inside. And I actually used the facing part of the pattern that comes with the Sapphire play suit. So I didn't need to sort of draft anything new or anything there. I literally just attached my flounce into the facing and into the bodice and then sewed it and turned the facing through, if that makes sense. Hopefully all of this will be shown in more detail in the video that I'll link down below. So that's where I was with the bodice of this dress. I knew I could use this pattern. And then further on in this book, there's another pattern which I knew I could attempt to use part of for this dress. Um, which is the Tabitha drawstring dress and um, this is actually a jersey dress but the pattern pieces that are included in this book are actually literally just for two rectangles um, with two holes for your drawstring waist. So I knew that I could use the skirt parts of this dress here to draft my own midi length skirt to attach to my Sophia bodice. So once my Sophia bodice was made and you can see that it's got the grown on sleeves here so they just kind of fall nicely over your shoulders I um, attached the bodice to the top of my skirt and I made a drawstring channel, which you can see here. And there are two buttonholes here, which I've fed my drawstring through. So the skirt ends up just gathering up quite nicely um, to the top of yours by a bodice. And I was really, really pleased with that hack. As I say, it was one of my earlier hacks and it was one of the first ones I tried. And I was really pleased with how the two patterns came together. Um, I do like this dress. I haven't worn it that much recently and I think the reason for that is probably because I'd really like to make this again um, and just change a couple of things about it that I'm not quite happy with on this version. So next time I make it I think I'll make this flounce a little bit narrower. For me it's very flouncy um, and it's quite wide so it would look a lot better I think if it was just a little bit narrower. Um, another change I'd like to make is actually to finish this inside bit here instead of with a face in I'd just bias bind it um, and I think that would sit a lot neater because I do find I'm just tucking in the facing all the time. Um, once it's on it's fine but when you put the dress on you have to really tuck everything in to make sure that it's all sitting nicely so I think if it was finished with bias binding it would be a lot neater. And then the other change I'd like to make is just to leave the skirt a little bit longer. I know I'm, when I made this dress, I was really disappointed with myself because I cut it too short and I was so upset. <laughs> um, I really wanted to leave it longer, like what the image is like um, from the dress that I was inspired by, but I don't know what happened. I just ended up cutting it too short. So yeah, I'd really like to make it again and make it that little bit longer. It's just another hack that I really want to make again. And I just don't have time to sew all these things that I really want to sew, but I thought I would include this dress as inspiration of just again, how you can combine two different patterns to make a brand new garment. The next pattern hack I wanted to include, and I'm not even sure if I can really call this a pattern hack because it was a kind of happy accident kind of pattern hack, <laughs> um, but I'll include it anyway. It's this um, lovely cropped style indigo top. This is the indigo pattern by Tilly and the Buttons. I'm sure you've probably seen it before. It's a lovely um, oversized baby doll style dress, um, a kind of smock dress with quite a high bodice and then a lovely floaty skirt. So I made a version of this dress a long, long time ago and I added a skirt and a frill to it. And I made it in this really nice viscose twill fabric, which I got from Minerva and it was a blog post, which again, I'll link below if you want to read more about it. Originally, I'd made this into a dress with a skirt and a frill, which initially I was happy with again, but then on wearing it, I found it really heavy on the bottom and I think it's because this viscose twill fabric is quite heavy and I'd made quite a full gathered skirt. So I didn't really enjoy wearing it as it was as a dress, um, but because I love this fabric so much and I really like the dress and the indigo style and everything, I decided to chop off most of the skirt and I made it into a very short peplum style top. So the bodice of the top is made exactly as the indigo would be normally. Although I always do shorten the indigo bodice by one inch, just so that it sits a bit higher on me. So I do find that as the pattern is drafted, it sits quite low and it, you don't really get that sort of baby doll style as much when your waist is low. So yeah, I'm really 
pleased with how that went in the end actually and I'm glad that I saved that dress and I managed to keep it in my wardrobe or keep this fabric in my wardrobe anyway because it just suits me much better and the length that it is it is quite short but again it looks really nice with jeans and high-waisted things and shorts and things so yeah it works really well so the reason I'm including this one in my favorite hacks video is because it is a really good hack that you can do with that pattern so um, this has definitely been done before and it's by no means original to me. <laughs> um, I know lots of people have hacked the indigo pattern into a top, but um, yeah, it's a really good one to try. And again, I would like to make another one. I'd like to make a nice white one that would uh, just go with everything really. It'd look really nice with shorts and jeans for summertime. And it's a really quick sew as well. Um, so with the indigo, dress or the indigo bodice there are just a couple of darts that you need to put in here and it's a really simple style to make and wear there are no fastenings in the indigo anywhere um it's wide enough to just pull over your head put on and off over your head so yeah a really really good one for a quick and easy sew and lastly since this is a favorite hacks video i had to include this one <laughs> um, and i'm sorry if i've shown this quite a few times in the past but i really do love how this turned out so this was a frilly collar blouse hack that I made again based on an inspiration image which I found from the high street and I'll put in the image here. Um, but yeah, it was a blouse that I'd seen from Next and it was at that time last year where frilly collar blouses were absolutely everywhere. They still are now really, aren't they? Um, and I wasn't quite sure about them at first but then as they became more and more prominent I decided to have a go making one myself but I knew I wouldn't be happy with any kind of collar that was too big um, so I decided to mash together a few different patterns that I own to get myself a frilly collar blouse um, made using patterns that I already own and I absolutely love doing things like this I just find it so much fun to put different patterns together and put different designs together and just see what I can create using patterns that I already own this is how my blouse turned out so i've used three different sewing patterns that i already owned here for the body of the blouse i've used the avid seamstress the blouse pattern and i've just altered it slightly just to lower the neckline because the original avid seamstress pattern actually has a mandarin collar that comes up quite high so i just took a little bit out of the height of the um, neckline there I've added in the piece of hand collar from the Sudley dress pattern, which I showed earlier, which I used to make my uh, Suzanne inspired dress. So I've used that piece of hand collar piece and I've bias bound it to the neckline of the Avid Seamstress the Blouse pattern. And then to add the little frill around the neckline here, I just used a strip of fabric, which I've double sided and gathered up into the collar before I turned it through. And then to make these um, elbow length, frilly sleeves. I used the sleeves from the Davenport dress by Friday Pattern Company and instead of having them full length I just shortened them to be up to elbow length and that worked really nicely and it really gave me the look that I was after. So yes, so pleased with this one and um, yeah it was just such fun to make. Again another one that I want to try again in a different fabric because I think the first time you make things there's always things I think that you would change or improve next time. So there is a couple of things in this that I would want to just change slightly next time just to make it a little bit neater. Overall, I'm really thrilled with this hack and I really wanted to include it today because of the amount of patterns really that are involved in this one. And I just wanted to give an example of how you can combine different patterns and throw them all together to make a new garment. So I hope you like that one too. So there we are, those are five of my favorite sewing pattern hacks. I hope you like them. When I looked through all of my garments to try and find my favorite to include in this video, I realized how many hacks I've done. But for the purpose of today's video, I thought I would share some older makes because I know that recently I've talked about quite a few different hacks and it's possible that a couple of those are also my favorite. I absolutely love my button down Lyra dress that I've made recently. And I also love my combination of the Lyra bodice and the Sapphire trousers, which I've made recently too. But since I've been talking about those two quite a lot recently, I thought I'd go back into my sewing archives and find some older sewing hacks that I can share with you today. So I hope you like them. Thanks so much for watching everyone. I'd love you to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. I post weekly every Sunday morning, sharing lots of sewing, inspiration and making, including knitting and crochet sometimes as well. 
If you have enjoyed this video, I'd love it if you gave it a like and do let me know in the comments as well what you love to hack. Let me know what your favorite hacks are. And if you are watching this in real time, then Kath and I would love it if you pop over to Instagram and join in with our So Mash Up Challenge. I'll link the video explaining everything about that challenge in the description of this video below. Thank you for watching everyone. Take care and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.